out there. This is my first try to translate one of my Unreal tutorials in English. I hope you can understand me well and this tutorial can help with your two projects. Today I present you a useful plugin for the Unreal Engine. It's called VRM4U. This plugin, with this plugin you can import your characters from Reward Studio into the Unreal Engine. Usually this is not possible because Unreal don't understand the VM format that Reward Studios give us. There's another way to get your characters into Unreal. It's possible to convert the VRM files with Blender to FBX and then import those into Unreal. But I think it's way easier with this plugin. It will do the most work for you. I think VRM4U is very useful to many people working in Unreal to get a custom character in your scenes. To make a working character is not that easy. It takes a lot of work. But with this plugin, it gets easier. And the only downside I can think of is the reward models are not optimized for a game engine, but they will work without a problem in smaller games. You see my character now is already in the game and I shall you know how I did it step by step from start to end. We start with Reward Studio to get our custom character. For everyone who don't know what Reward Studio is, it's basically a complex character editor which has everything you need to create your own character. The best thing is everything we need for animations is already in the models. It's fully rigged, has blend shapes for expressions. Usually people use this program to create characters and use them for VTubing and streaming, but as you see, it works also for game engines. Yeah. You can download this program from the website or from Steam. By the way, every site we visit today is linked down below in the description. The first row of characters are example characters from Reward Studio itself. The second row are the characters you made. You can use the example characters for testing, but don't use them on public works without credit the creator. We will use Julia as example today. This is the editor itself. Here you have everything you need to edit your model. As you see, there are many options, but for this video, we won't focus on them. Maybe in another tutorial, we take a look or better in more. As you see, there are many options to customize your model. Yeah, we have our model ready to export. On the upper bar, we go to camera exporter and then to export on the left bar and push the export button on the right. A new window will open. You just have to fill out the first lines, the name of the model and the name of the creator. If you want to, you can fill out the rest. Here you can decide who can use the model and, and which rules the model has. For example, Julia is free to use, but not for textual content. And you have to credit me as the creator of the model when you use her. The last pound comes for every model you use when you don't make it yourself. Name to your creator and put the link to them in the description. Now we have the VM file with Julia we can use in Unreal. For everyone who don't want to use Reward Studio to create his own character or just to want to test a few things quick, there's another option to get a free character. The site I have to offer is Reward Hub. Many people use this site to show their creations and some of them are free to use. Just search for a free character and look around if you find something you like. Click on a character you like and you get a 3D view of the model. And down here on the right side are the rules. And like I said before, credit is a must. Push the button to download and we can go to the next step. We have our model now. Next step is to get the plugin to translate the VRM file for the Unreal Engine. This site here is the homepage of the creators who made the plugin. Down here you can read everything the program does, but important to us now is the link to the GitHub site where we can get a plugin. Yeah, on GitHub, many people share useful things they create like this plugin. And here on the right are the files we're looking for. We just have to get the right plugin for the project we want to use it for. In my case, it's the version 4.26. This is the version I use for the school scene. Click and download. We have no zip file, just unzip it and we get the folder we need. Now we have to put the folder in the right place. If it's not in the right place, it won't work. The first time I tried it out, I put the folder in the wrong place and I was confused because I could find a plugin in the settings, but it don't work. We need to go into the Unreal Engine project folder we want the plugin to use in. We don't need the Unreal Engine itself, just the projects. The folder with the youth project in it is the right place. I already have it in here. Back in the open Unreal Engine project, just one thing is to do now. We go to the plugin settings. There we search for VRM and enable the VRM for you plugin. The engine will know we start for you. Now we finally can start to import our characters into the project. I myself make me some folders first to sort everything to find it easier later. It's easy to lose the overview of everything because we will get many assets from the VRM file. As I said in the beginning, the VRM files are not optimized for games engines, but they work. But keep this in mind when you plan to use many characters at once on a level. It can slow down your game. I use the main folder for the character and two subfolders, one for the materials and one for the animations. Everything is prepared now. We just import our character into the project. Just drag and drop the VM file in the folder of the character. 
We get a new window. Yeah, here we need to check if the T-Bow is enabled. There is an option to reduce the bones, but I don't know how good they work. I don't test it very much. One thing you need to check are the optimization options. They reduce a few things for you. And then import. As you see, we get many assets. The first time you import a model into the project will take a while because Unreal needs to compile all the shaders. After this, it goes way quicker to import a model. Now I go and put the materials in the material folder and the textures are... Oh, no. Now I go and put the materials in the material folder, just like the textures and the other images. Now we just have the basic stuff we need to work with in the main folder, like the model itself, the physics, blend shapes, the rig, skeleton mesh, and skeleton. Save everything before you go on. We have our character now in the project, but she's just deposing right now. Neuron set is playable. The only animation right now Julia does is the blend shapes. She's switching through. That's normally, don't worry. I was, I was confused in my first try too. First things first, we need to prepare Julia to fit the basic animations we get from Unreal from the Unreal Third Person project by default. So she can do more than just T-posing at us. For this, we go into a skeleton and check if the plugin has imported everything correctly and the skeleton match with the default skeleton from Unreal. Yeah, we, we first check if the humanoid rig is selected and check if the bones are matching. Normally the plugin does this work for you, but it don't hurt to check. At last here we view the pose and check if the A pose is selected in the position. Now, if this is not the case, you can change the position of the model by clicking on the bones and rotate them into position. Finish this with use current pose and we are done with the skeleton. Now everything is matching with the existing skeleton on the mannequin, which comes with the third person content from Unreal Engine by default. And we can retarget the movements from him to Julia. We go to the mannequin and his animations. Here is every animation he can do at the moment. The green ones are the animation it's and the yellow ones are blueprints, which blends the animations together, like from walking to running with a smooth transition. We want everything, so we go to the third person animation blueprint. This is the main controller and the other animations are connected with it. Right click on here and go to retarget animation blueprints and then duplicate animation blueprints and retarget. We now get a new window. On the left we have all our skeletons in the project. Now we have to check if the pictures matches or more does the poses match. If the character don't match, and for example the character is in another position or not in the same pose, it will not work properly. Most of the time the bones are the issue. The wrong bone is connected with the target in the skeleton. If everything is correct, we can push change. Now we can choose the folder we want to save the animations for Julia in. Press OK. Now we can retarget everything to Julia and she gets the same animations like the mannequin has. I changed the name from the animation blueprints to find it quicker later and save everything. We can go and take a look at the animations. Everything works good. Now let us change Noah with Julia to be able to use her as playable character. Click on the current character and on the right side you can choose your character and give him the right animation blueprints. This is why I changed the name so I find it easier. Save to be sure. Yeah, sa save everything to be sure. And we can play Julia now. As you see, her hair is kind of weird. It has, it has the movement, but we can change this too. The vm for you plugin gives us bones in the hair and in the clothes as spring bones, and we can use them in here too. Double click on animation blueprints. We need the animation graph. This thing here. Right click and search for vm spring bones and connect the node with the input and the output. It should look like this. Now we click on this node to give him the information which bone should be used. We have Julia, so we need Julia's bones. Otherwise it won't work correctly. Here you can change the gravity of the bones to you need. You will see why. I will use the default one to show you. Play and we see the hair moves now. But as you see, the movement is really strong. This can be fixed with the gravity until it fits for you. 
There is no real number to fit on all because it depends on the bones itself and how many are in the model and where they are placed. Finally, we finished. We can use our reworked models in Unreal without a problem. I hope I could help you with this tutorial to get a nice character for the project you're working on. Then, thank you again for your attention and a big thank you to my Patreon for release. And have a nice day and fun with your projects.